Hi, I'm Liz Larson with The Art of Frosting, back with some cake decorating basics. Well, not so basic today. Today I'm going to take you with me as I make a box troll for the first time. It's a lot of fun, a little difficult, some tricky spots, but we'll work our way through it and I'll show you as many of the steps as I can along the way. For the box troll cake, I'm actually using a 12 inch square pan that I have cut into four six inch squares. So the body of my cake is gonna be six inch square. A couple of uh, fine skewers, some fine bendy straws, and candy melts. This is a Wilton candy melt. You could also use some um, almond bark or white chocolate that you've colored for this. I'm gonna use a quarter sheet platter for this. So I can put my box troll at one end and his feet can stick out at this end. I'm using a mega muffin or a three inch cake for his head and I've got a couple of um, cupcake sized cakes that I'm going to use for feet. We're going to start with a trick that we've used before. I've got a cup here that's actually filled with some millet. You could use lentils or any kind of beans. Just something to help my straw stand up. And we're going to dip them in our candy melt. So the candy melt, this is going to be used for his little arms, and the candy melt I needed to get the right color and so our box trolls are kind of a grayish, bluish, greenish blue. So I used some white, some blue, a little bit of green, and I mixed in just the tiniest bit of gray. And I'm going to cover my little straw and then shake off as much as I can. And these are going to serve as this little arms that can stick out. Next we want to gather up our candy melt and we're going to stick it in, put it in one of our little parchment bags here. And we're going to make the ears. Here is what is going to be used as our head. It's a three inch uh, cake, but it's actually the size of a mega muffin as well. So our ears need to be uh, roughly about an inch and a half. I'm going to cut off just the tip here. But I want to be sure that they're going to stay on my cake. I don't want things falling off. I want to make a little triangular ear. Like I said, about an inch, maybe an inch and a half. You want to start with the outline here. Make a few. And then I want to take my small spatula and spread that out so that when these go on the cake, they have a thinness in the center that makes them look a little translucent so that the light can shine through. And then I want to stick my little skewer in the top edge here and take my candy melt and go over them. So I'm going to have the, the top part of the ear is going to be thicker and disguise my skewer. I want to quickly fill and trim our cakes. Now these are fairly thick layers and so I'm going to end up using only three of my squares to get the height that I want. I'm going to use our quick icer as we almost always do. I'm actually going to show you something that I haven't shown you before. But first I want to get this thin layer of icing on smooth lightly and use that to lightly crumb ice like we always do. So I'm actually going to run two strips down the middle here. I'm using a very light tan. In fact, on camera it might show as white, but it's actually just a very light tan that I've used brown. And then I've mixed a little bit of my own color. I noticed with the box trolls that their colors aren't exactly exact. They kind of shift around during the movie, which is kind of part of it that I really liked. So I mixed a little bit of my own brown, but you can just use brown out of the container. And if you're mixing your own brown, you just use a little bit of green and red. And I'm going to take my bag and stripe right up one side. And I want a heavy stripe, if you can see that. And then I'm going to fill my bag with my light tan. This is color striping just on a larger scale. Now I want to squeeze that out until I get a nice line of brown up one side. So you can see as I squeeze that out, I'm actually getting 
brown on one side. What I want to do with that is I want to make sure I have the dark side on the out and I want to actually come up the side of my box and you can see I've got a dark line there. I want to turn it over and do the same on this side. What I'm wanting to do here is I'm wanting to delineate the sides of my boxes and as I ice that line will spread a little bit and it'll give me a little more color. It'll be a little streaky, which is good. And add to the cartoon-like features here. Now I just want to use my drywall tool or my um, bench knife here and just start to blend inward from the sides, which is a little different. So I'm going to go all the way around one way, blending in from the side and then all the way back the other way, just because I want to use that color striping that we've used a little bit here. It's really working out how I want. My box is streaky. It actually looks a little dirty, which is perfect. Our little box trolls are kind of dirty and scruffy looking. And I'm also shaping up my square. I also can take my palette knife that has my color on and run it across a little bit, just really delicately on my corners if I want and add a little bit more grunge and just go around as much as you want to get it the shape color and dimension that you want and let's move on before we move on we have a little bit of business we need to attend to so this is a stacked cake even though they're only six inch tall cakes they are Still a pretty big cake. You'll end up with about 16 to 20 servings out of this. So we want to dowel this cake so that if it is delivered, it does not slide from side to side. A little bit of coconut. Now you don't need to use coconut if you don't like it or don't want to. You just need to use something that prevents the bottom cake from sticking to the little board. You need a board. I'm going to punch a little hole through the middle of it. We're going to place our cake. This is a three inch round and center it. Now remember this is going to be the front of our cake. So we want to center his little head in the middle of the cake. Then we want to take another skewer and secure top layer down through our cake so it can't move the whole thing is very stable and we can begin to sculpt our box troll head now here comes the tricky part we need to make the color for the box trolls head and hands and feet so we want to make quite a bit and it's a little tricky because we want it to be a very light green, but it's also a grayed green. And this is where our color theory comes in. So I'm just using some um, leaf green here, some Welton leaf green, and I'm mixing it in. And I'm not going to mix totally uh, because we want some of that color variation. Now we want to gray this slightly, and I've made a little bit of pink because we're going to need a little pink for his mouth, but I don't want to put intense pink in here. So how you gray something is you actually use the colors contrast. The contrast to green is red. I don't want it to be quite that gray, so I'm just going to add the pink in. And don't be afraid to keep remixing this. If it's too dark, um, add some more white. If it's not gray enough, add some more pink. But work on this a little bit until you get just the right color. I'm going to add more pink because I really want to gray that down. But also, in the cartoon, it's very, the colors are streaked. You see a little purple, you see a little blue. But I think that's about right. And I'm going to leave a little bit of the pink showing through. And I may even add a little white in my bag. Now we're on to the hard part. 
of sculpting his head and face. The nice part about this is that our cake here actually gives us just the right shape because shoes, the box troll, actually has a very flat head. I'm using just the open end of a coupler for my figure piping tool in this case. And what I want to do is I want to just go ahead and cover his head and the back of his head. The parts that we're not worried about having to make a particular shape so that we can do a quick crumb ice on this. I'm going to start by using my palette knife just to round and smooth and then I'm going to come back in with our Ziploc bag trick that we've used so many times. We want to get in here to start and start to create definition and shape, rounding just a little bit. Not too much though because we want the top of his head to be flat. As we come around the front, we'll go ahead and crumb ice just lightly so that this is covered. We just don't want our cake showing through later. We're going to use a plastic Ziploc bag and we're going to cut it in about thirds and use that as our smoothing tool. If you guys have been watching for a while, you've seen me do this, and this is actually Leah's technique for smoothing buttercream to make it look like fondant. And you want to make sure that you have your image that you're using pulled up on your computer or printed out so you can get an idea of what you want the face to look like. The fun part about this is there's so many different so many different expressions you can make. So I want him smiling and I'm just gonna mark here where I want the edge of his smile to come. His smile's really really wide and I'm gonna go ahead and just rough that in now using my coupler as a figure piping tip. So all the way up like that. And I know that his top of his mouth is kind of, this is like a lemon shape. His nose is going to be there and the edge of his smile will be here. Brow line is going to come up and around like so. And I know that this comes out a little heavier, so we'll add that now and extend his smile. You see that I'm building on top of what I've already figure piped on. You do need to have a decorating buttercream or a product like Pastry Pride, something that will actually hold that shape. And inset is his little lip here, which comes down. All we want to do here is just really lightly smooth our edges. I can see that I want his smile to come way up here so I can go ahead and cut that in with my palette knife. Also I can smooth out his upper lip here. And I'm coming back in with a number 12 figure piping tip so that I have a little bit more control of what I'm adding in. I'm actually going to be filling out this part of his face a little bit more. And Pulling it up in, I'm actually adding a little bit to the back to that as well. Maybe able to see a little better here, which will also create a little bit more stability. I'm getting to where I want the face shape to be and I've never made a box troll before so it's taken me a little time. Basically you just want to keep adding and sculpting, taking away where you need to. Luckily it's icing so it's very very forgiving. The other thing is you can come in and you can actually use your uh, piece of plastic here to create wrinkles and shapes. He's got a couple little wrinkles over his nose that I'm going to add in here with the edge of my bag. I need to get in now and open up his eyes a little bit more. I want to keep this ridge that I've created here 
and pull it, just blend it back into his head. Then I'm just gonna use the edge here and hollow it out until I get the nice shape open eyes that I want. I can also move the icing a little bit with my bag, which helps a lot too. I use a little bit of a trick that we used on the box and I'm just gonna touch the edge of my bag here inside my brown coloring or the red and green that you added. And this is really touchy, you gotta be really careful with this, but I wanna add just a touch of depth of color. And so I'm gonna use this to paint ever so delicately, just underneath his smile line here, just to add a little bit of color. Be really careful with this. You could also just use a paintbrush if you wanted, or you could color stripe your bag. I chose not to do that because I just want a little bit more control in that little bit of color that I add. I'm going to do the same thing here, just inside his eyes, just delicately, just for a little dimension and a little more color. I'm using my spatula painting technique before I do any more detail on the face, just to create a little collar, a little sense that there's a hole down here that he's coming in out of. So I'm just sculpting the icing of my cake just a little bit and uh, adding that little bit of color right there. Come back in and define with my spatula. I'm gonna use that dark brown again and stripe the inside of a parchment here so that I can get some deep color down in his mouth. I'm gonna refill that back with some of the original green color of his skin and then mix right in there. We're gonna use this for his mouth. I don't wanna use black for this because I don't, the contrast would be too, too much. So we're just gonna come in and create some depth for the inside of his mouth. I'm gonna come back in with my spatula and just lightly smooth that. And just lightly, remember we're gonna put in his lips and his teeth. Got his uh, dark of his mouth, the color that I want, and I'm gonna come in with some pink and do his nose. So I'm gonna a little bit of a heart-shaped nose with some nostrils. We'll bring the nostrils in after. And give him his lip. I'm gonna come back in with uh, the tip of a skewer this time and just highlight that lip a little bit, give that a little bit more color, a little bit more definition and depth. Again, you could use a paintbrush if you wanted. You could also color stripe your bag to get this little line here. While I'm here, I'm gonna come in and make his little nostrils. And start to see that just with the addition of his teeth, I mean of his mouth, we're starting to really see his face shape up. So we wanna come in and add a few teeth and I'm just using a number 12 writer. And his teeth are really sort of randomly spaced in here. So that's what we want to do too. So one big one here. And I think we will leave it at just about that. I wanna work on his eyes now, and his eyes are yellow, but I wanna come in and add a little bit of that darker brownish green just in around. A 
about like that just for one more layer of dimension his eyes are yellow and they're kind of egg shaped so I just used my bag that I had my number 12 figure piping tip in and I just added some yellow to it and we're going to come in and use a light rotating motion to create his eyes. Give him a dark green iris and then I'm going to come back in and give him a nice big pupil. Now I need to move on to his ears. And I'm going to do a technique that I haven't done with you guys before. So we have our candy melt ear and it's not quite the right color that I want. I noticed that as I look at my picture, I see that they, he has a little bit of pink inside his ear. So I'm going to just wipe a little bit of pink into my candy melt. And I'm also going to take just a little bit of this darker green color and I'm just going to wipe it on and place his ear down low where I want it, right down in. I'm really glad I used the doweling technique with this ears, putting a little bit of skew in there because I can roll them forward just a little bit, which actually is just a little more right. Before we make any additions to the rest of the box troll, I want to work on the front of his box. And I want to just lightly sketch in the label. And I've got my skewer dipped in a little bit of that brown green, dark brown green. The front of his box has just a little bit of pink. So we're just going to paint that little bit of pink in. Then we're going to come in and delicately make this shoe. We'll come back in and just very delicately smooth again and just highlight just a little, just a little bit. It's just the tiniest bit of white flourish that we're just going to use the end of our bag for and use our S shape. We need to come back in with our brown and create an armhole here as well. We don't want to take away all of the icing. We just want to create a nice round. So if you just take your spatula and give it a swirl, and then you want to place your your arms in there. We need to get to our feet and our hands and the hands and feet are really pretty big. So I'm going to use this uh, cupcake size. It's actually a two inch cake. I'm going to cut it in half. And I think that that will be perfect for about the size of his feet. Just about like that. I'm going to use these leftover straws that I have and stick it up in about like that so it'll support my feet and I can put them at the angle that I want. For my legs, hands, and feet, I've actually combined all of my colors. My darker green, my lighter green, and my pink. I'm actually going to come back over his legs just to make them a little thicker here. And then I'm going to start piping the feet. I'm going to give him a, a nice big heel and come in and start to do toes. Now I'm just roughing in my design here. It's four toes. And I know I still need to ice the back. I just want to get an idea of my size and my shape. You can see that my pink is starting to come out. They have a lot of pink in their hands and feet. And I want to start roughing in his hand. So here is the back of this hand and the back of this hand. And he needs four big fingers and a thumb. So we know the thumb needs to come in. Give him a nice fat thumb. Squeeze, let it build and release, just like we do on our shell borders. One more, squeeze, let it build and release. And a 
pinky. Covered the rest of the feet with icing and I'm using just the same technique as I did with the head, just coming in and sculpting and shaping. And I got a little bit more pink than I wanted, so I can just come back in and either wipe that off or wipe just a little more color over it. Remember that we want there to be lots of variegated colors in the hands and feet. And then I will come back in with my baggy trick and smooth out a little bit more. So I finished sculpting his feet and smoothing and I'm just going to come in and redo the toes. So I just want to give him four fat toes and just a tiny bit of a pad there. And again, big toe and leave it at that. So I'm coming in now and I'm just smoothing out my hands here a little bit. And you can see on this hand I've smoothed it and given it a little bit of definition. So that's just what I'm going to do here, just smooth the fingers. Decided that his arms were too skinny, so I'm just going to figure pipe right over him. Give him a nice fat elbow. And come right back down in. We are very, very close to being finished. We just need to add a couple more accents here. One is that they have a lot of these rags wrapped around their wrists. So we want to come in and put a little bit of that in. Just using a, a parchment with some white in it and just you want to let some of them hang down. Let it drop a little bit. And a little bit across his legs here as well. Well, we did it. And I'm really happy with the way he turned out, especially for a first try. I think he's really cute, really graphic, and I think any little kid would definitely recognize him as a box troll, and especially know that he's shoes. Always, you can find me at The Art of Frosting on Facebook and at www.theartoffrosting.blogspot.com. You can email me at cakedecoratinginstructor at gmail.com with those really serious cake decorating questions. Please, if you guys try this, send me your pictures. We share them with our community on Facebook and at the blog. And I love to see them and love to see what you're up to. Thanks again. We'll see you all again really soon. Bye.